Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Eric'sTrains.com. Today we're going to take a look at what is obviously a beautiful engine. This is the brand new Lionel 3 rail O scale 115th anniversary 284 Berkshire. Alright, so as you may or may not know, 2015 marks the 115th anniversary of Lionel Trains. And so to celebrate, they've released a whole bunch of commemorative gear, such as t-shirts, wall signs, wall clocks, a boxcar, coffee mugs, and other assorted knickknacks. And then of course they've put out a commemorative engine, which is this beautiful chrome-plated Berkshire. I have to admit that when I first heard of the 115th anniversary, I thought it was a little weird because, I mean, what's the significance of 115 over, say, 114 or 116? It didn't make sense. But as I thought about it some more, I realized that maybe it does make sense and maybe there is a reason to celebrate. You know, over the last few years, Lionel has undergone a transition and we're kind of entering a new era for the company. They moved their headquarters down to North Carolina, which was a big move. And they've also had some changes in the leadership. And so maybe this is their way of saying, hey, we've been here for 115 years. We're going to be here for 115 more. We're not going anywhere. Everything is going to be okay. Sort of a celebration of the changing of the guard, if you will. And so maybe that's what they had in mind. I don't know that for sure. I'm just guessing, but I hope that's the case. Anyway, whatever the reason for the celebration, we've got this beautiful engine to show for it. Now, this is going to be a shorter review than I typically do, and that's because not long ago I did a review on the Lionel Nickel Plate Road 765 Berkshire, and that model is exactly the same as this model, except for the exterior silver chrome finish, and of course the road name and the road number. So I would recommend first going back and making sure you've watched the review for the 765, and then you can come back here and watch this review because I'm not going to bother rehashing all of the information that I already put out there in the 765 review. Rather, in this review, I'm going to focus on the differences between this engine and the normal Berkshire. So stuff like the exterior finish, the signage, the packaging, and stuff like that. So again, if you haven't watched the 765 review yet, Go back and watch that first, then watch this review. That way you won't miss anything and you won't need to ask any questions that have already been answered. Anyway, after we take a look at the engine, we're going to run it around the layout for a few minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so let's start off with the packaging. As you can see, this engine came in a very nice commemorative box, which was very thoughtful of them. Also packaged with the engine is this nice certificate of authenticity. This is very similar to the one that was packaged with the Nickel Plate Road 765. And it lets you know that this is one of 250 pieces that were made. Mine is number 135 of 250. And over here it's got the signature of Howard Hitchcock, the president of Lionel. And on just a cursory examination, it looks like it's real ink. When you first open the box, one of the coolest and most surprising things you'll find is a pair of gloves and these are meant to be used to handle the engine. They're nothing fancy, they're just made of undershirt material or something similar, but they allow you to handle the engine without having to worry about fingerprints because as I'm sure many of you know, whenever you have a chrome plated model or a chrome plated anything for that matter, fingerprints are a constant problem and I can speak from experience because I own an MTH Rail King Coors Light Silver Bullet Train. The whole darn thing is chrome plated, it's beautiful, but I'm always fighting fingerprints when handling it and for that reason I eventually started using rubber gloves to handle that thing. And so it was really thoughtful for Lionel to include these gloves with this engine. Very thoughtful, very cool, and like I said it allows you to handle the engine all you want without having to worry about those darn fingerprints. Alright, now let's talk about the engine itself, starting with this beautiful chrome plated finish. Now actually it's not chrome plating. Lionel has a fancy term for it. They call it a nano painted finish. I have no idea what that means, but it looks like chrome plating and so that's what I'm going to call it. So forgive me if I'm using the wrong term here and there. If you want to get precise, it is a nano painted finish. 
Now, the finish looks really good, but it's not perfect. If I was rating this, I would probably give it an 8 or 9 out of 10, and not a 10 out of 10. And that's because here and there, there are small inconsistencies. There are some blemishes here or there. I think most of the blemishes are due to stuff that happens in shipping, because these things have to come all the way from China. So it's not totally perfect, but it's good enough. The only way you're going to see the inconsistencies is if you stand about two or three inches from it. If you stand back just a little bit, like the distance between the engine and the camera right now, which is about 18 inches, it looks perfectly fine. So the inconsistencies in the finish are not that big of a deal in my opinion, but I did want to talk about it for just a second because if you do buy one of these things and you get up real close to it, you will likely notice a few inconsistencies here and there. Again, not a big deal, but in the spirit of honesty, I wanted to put it out there. One really cool thing about this engine is that it's got lots of customized signage all over the place. So here on the side of the boiler are the builder's plates. The top plate reads Lionel Lines Railway Equipment Trust of 1900, I think. National Bank of New York Trustee Owner and Lessor. The middle plate reads 115 Lionel Locomotive Works Incorporated May 2015. And then below that, we've got the Superheater Company plate, which I believe has not been customized. Here's a shot of the logo on the tender, and as you can see, Lionel did a fantastic job here. This looks awesome. And then right below the logo, there is another customized builder's plate, which once again reads Lionel Lines Railway Equipment, Trust of 1900, National Bank of New York, Trustee, Owner, and Lessor. As a side note, the finish on this engine is so reflective that as I'm shooting this video, I'm having to be careful where I place the camera because as you can see from this angle, everything is being reflected in the tender. You can see the camera, there I am, and you can see everything behind me as well. The last sign that I want to show you is on the underside of the tender, and just like on the Certificate of Authenticity, it lets me know that this is number 135 of the 250 anniversary Berkshires that Lionel made. All right, now it's time for BFIMO, best feature in my opinion. Well, best feature is a complete no-brainer this time around. It is this gorgeous chrome-plated finish, and if you don't think that's the best feature on this model, well, it may be time to make an appointment with your eye doctor. All right, now let's go ahead and start her up. This is the dispatcher. Do you copy? Roger that, dispatcher. I read you. Over. Very good. Start up and hold. Gotcha, dispatcher. Let's get to work. Out. All right, let's check out the whistle. And just like the 765, this does have the whistle steam smoke effect. So when I blow the whistle, you'll see smoke coming out of the whistle right over here. And here's the bell. Here's the sound of water being added to the tender. The water's full. Over. Copy that. Out. And here's the sound of the steam blowdown. By pressing and holding the reset button on the legacy remote, we can get the sound of coal being added to the tender.
finally, here's a sampling of some of the crew talk sounds. And just like on the 765, the cab side of the crew talk sounds are voiced by Rich Melvin. This is the dispatcher. Stand by. Over. Roger. Sit tight. Out. Dispatcher here. You're cleared outbound. Over. Thank you much. Cleared to move. Here we go. Out. Tower. Stopped and ready to offload. Over. Acknowledged. Welcome back. Out. Dispatcher, are we clear through the crossing? Over. Yep. Clear ahead. Over. Thank you, sir. All clear ahead. Out. Dispatcher here. All clear inbound. Over. Thank you much. All clear inbound. Out. This is the dispatcher. Come to a full stop. Over. Roger that. Full stop. Out. Just a bit of trivia for you. I went to the York train show this year, and while I was there, I spoke briefly with Rich Melvin, and I asked him about his experiences recording the crew talk sounds for Lionel, and I had assumed all along that maybe he went to a studio to record those sounds, but actually, they did it quite low-tech. They recorded the crew talk sounds over the telephone, and it actually made sense when I thought about it because the sound quality over the telephone is probably pretty much like the sound quality over the radio. So it actually worked out quite well. All right, let's go ahead and move it out. Now I've got some mixed California Zephyr cars and Amtrak cars behind this thing. It's not entirely prototypical, but then again, neither is a big silver engine with a Lionel logo on it.
right, that about wraps it up for this review. This is a gorgeous engine, as you can see, and I'm really happy that I own one. Now, if you're interested in purchasing one of these, the retail price is right at $2,000, although you may be able to get a little bit of a discount through a good Lionel dealer. Now, as I said before, Lionel claims this is a limited edition with only 250 of these being made. So if that's true and you wait too long, you may find it difficult to get one of these and you may have to resort to eBay or something like that. So if you want one, it's better to try to get one sooner rather than later. And as always, if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer and one who you can try to get this through, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can find them on the web at www.legacystation.com or give them a call at 770-339-7780. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time. To discuss this model or any other O-Gage trains and to meet other O-Gage modelers, check out the O-Gage Railroading Magazine online forum at ogrforum.ogagerr.com.